Well, we made it, guys. If you're watching this, it is Halloween 2023. And since, it's the, since this is a very special Halloween episode, I decided to spooky up the joint a little bit, you know? Um, it's always so bright in here. And uh, I shut the furnace off, even though it's 35 degrees outside. And uh, got my LED lights strategically placed. And we're going to sit back, surrounded by monsters of old, and tell you a little story. really good and hard about this whether I was gonna do this tonight or not I'm like do I just go down there grab some more old masks and start talking about masks or do we actually dig in and tell you a story about the Frankenshrine and the good old Frankenshrine collection I think you're gonna to want to go with B on that one <laughs> not a but B um, this, is, this place looks amazing with LED lights, by the way. I always say when I get this collection all together nicely, I'm going to put some LEDs in spots so I can really make it like this. Whenever I have parties or people over, I can really make it spooky in here because it looks like a, like a haunted house, you know, like an amazing attraction. Um, so, yes, the Frankenstein... Um, this has been a very, like, emotional evening because I've been going through a lot of old videos uh, of Frank and I digging through his basement, looking through boxes, and it's like, man, it's crazy. Um, dating back to, like, 2016, right around that time, we were doing a lot of this stuff. So, I always say I'm going to do this, like, documentary or this great video on, on his collection. I said, you guys have heard you've heard enough so far about Frank that I got to give you a taste of it. I've got to give you at least a good story, a very visual story um about one of the greatest moments in my entire life as a collector. You know, the experience I had simply going into one room um blew my mind. Blew my mind. So we're going to talk, we're going to, I'm not going to show you the entire Frankenstein tonight. That is still far, far, far down the road. But you've heard the word Frankenstein a million times so far on this channel. You've seen the videos, the artifacts of the Frankenstein. I said, these guys, I got to give them a taste. I got to give them a taste of what, what I experienced when I first met Frank. Um, not when I first met him, but when I first stepped foot into just part of his collection, okay? Keep in mind, uh, Frank was well into his 70s, okay? During all of this and right before he passed away, of course. And uh, he was not in the best of health, okay? He, you know, one thing uh, his brother and, and I both, we would get on him to take better care of himself, you know, and you should do more of this and less of that and eat right and eat better. Um, Frank truly lived in his bubble of horror and monsters. And I am, I'm not kidding you when I, I say this, but it's like, I get, I know the feeling when, when life is really tough or you're going through problems, you always have your your things your collection your monsters your special room or whatever it may be in your home where you can go there and it seems like everything can go away for a while you know and that's i think that's what frank truly experienced with this amazing collection he put together because uh life gave him some ups and downs you know and and he and i spoke in great detail about a lot of it and uh i know his collection 
was that special place where he can go, where he'd be able to go to escape, to escape everything he was dealing with or, you know, just the crazy world we're living in. And uh, the collection was so special to him. And, uh, and it's, we'll talk a lot more about this in the, in the big video down the road, but it's, it's like, I, I truly watched this man. He was so hardcore into this, everything we love. We're, you know, a lot of you are really young. A lot of you are my age, old or whatever. He literally lived this until the day he died. You know, it is, it is unbelievable. Um, like I probably said before, the day before he passed away, he called me on the phone. I was out of the country to tell me Halloween 3 was on. He's like, oh my God, Halloween 3 is on. I got to tell you. It was amazing. Amazing meeting someone like, like Frank. It's a one in a million uh, friendship that I still think back. Like, what if I never, never bought that zombie from him? I would not be sitting here telling you the things I tell you and showing you the things I show you. And uh, I wouldn't, uh, his collection probably would not have lived on in any form um, for sure. But... So where am I trying to go with all this? Back to Frank and, and like his, you know, in, in his condition, he really could not physically do too many things, okay? He couldn't get around very well. And when we would go down to the main collection, it was a, it was a kind of a big deal for him. He'd have to really sit down for a while and it was, it was taking a toll on him, you know? So uh, I, I would ask him, like, on the phone. We, I was on the phone all night talking to him. I'd say, do you have any calendar masks, you know? He'd just think and go, yeah, yes, I, I have some. I, I believe I have some. And he'd say they're like, uh, you know, at least old castings of them or, you know, special castings of calendar masks from molds and whatnot. He goes, they're all in this bedroom. You know, they're all in my old bedroom of my house. And, uh... The way, the way Frank's collection was, he lived in his house, but the collection, the main collection was in a whole other location. Okay, that's all I'm going to say right now. So he said, I want you to come out. The first time he invited me out, he goes, I want you to understand something, though, that the bedroom they are in, he goes, I haven't been in that room for uh, about 10 years. He said... It was over nine years ago that I, I remember putting stuff in front of the door and I just couldn't get there into that room anymore. You know, he kind of just blocked the way to his bedroom. And so he always had to sleep in the living room. And uh, I said, listen, I want to, I'll come out. I don't care. I will help you. Whatever we got to do, I'll help you. And uh, I said, it might be a good thing where we check on those masks and see, I, first of all, I'm like envisioning things. I'm trying to picture a bed and I'm thinking masks are like on the headboard of the bed. And I'm just picturing like six or seven masks, you know, just, I, I'm just got this little picture in my head for like three years of talking on the phone. And, uh, so the fast, fast forward, I get out there and, uh, He's like, okay, we're going to have to move a lot of stuff away from this room. He's like, it's going to be, I know it's going to be real dusty in there. I said, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to, I'm going to help you move the stuff. We'll go in there and I, I want to see some masks. This is way before I was able to go to the other location. I said, no, let's just spend the day here. And uh, he said, he said, you're really going to like what you see. He kept saying that. I'm like, okay. He's getting, me, he's getting me so excited. So I ended up out there. I flew out there. And I met him at his front door. And uh, the the happiness on his face was, was unbelievable. The first time we actually met face to face. He opened his, he opened his garage door. Smiled. He's like, how you doing? You know, we're shaking hands and. He could not believe that someone actually came out to visit him. You know, he's like, he has a brother. They both obviously love each other. They're brothers. 
but when it came to friends, he was a very, very, very small, you know, count on one hand thing where the, the he just had so many friends um, in the end that I think he really communicated with anymore. So he was, he could not believe someone got in an airplane, came out to visit him. So it was amazing. That was, I'll never forget that day, shaking his hand for the first time. I've got video of it. I may be showing it during this, but so, uh, we have, we go in and we sit at his kitchen counter. He's like, I don't want to show you anything for a while. Let's just talk. And I'm like, so amped up to see these masks, you know, I'm like excited, but I was so thrilled to talk with him. And we talked for probably two hours before he finally said, I think he wanted to feel me out too. Like we've talked for years on the phone. He kind of wanted to like vet me or something like, all right, you passed the test. Like, I'll show you my masks. That's <laughs> the kind of kind of collector he was. He, you know, he he was very very private. I've gotten into serious arguments with people about him being so private, and they didn't believe me. And so anyway, um, he said, "Okay, uh, I'll show you where the door is, and if you can help move all these boxes and things, there's boxes stacked up to the ceiling." And uh, when I cleared, when I cleared the boxes away, and I opened the door to this bedroom, and what I see across the room from me, I don't think anything will ever top this this experience in my life as a collector because it was unbelievable. Okay, if you're a if you're a serious Don Post collector, you're gonna you're you're gonna know what I'm talking about when you see the images I show you. Um, the door swings open and there's dust. Everything's dusty as hell, you know, because 10, like a decade of no one even entering the room it was sealed off. And uh, I see these two long bookshelves on the wall and all of these bags. <laughs> and I knew there was masks under them, but they were so caked with dust. You couldn't tell exactly what they were. I obviously knew, like, forget the 10 years, those masks have probably been there for 30 years, <laughs> you know? Um, and he said, yeah, he goes, a lot of these I got in the 80s and they've been in this bedroom. You know, he took, he took really great care of his things. Um, and thank you. God, he put them under these plastic bags. You know, some things didn't make it under bags, but uh, the majority of these these masks were all under plastic. So I walk in there and I see these two shelves and I'm like stunned. And I'm like, I felt like Indiana Jones or something, you know, going to some some old tomb and, and seeing some artifacts on the wall, artifacts of the Frankenstein, right? And I'm like... I think I know what's under these plastic bags. I'm looking one by one and they're so dusty. You can't really tell what, you really can't tell what they are. But I've seen shapes of things like, I think that's a creature. Oh my God, I think, I think that's a mole man. I think that's a fly. And uh, it was, it was one of the greatest moments. Like I will say this over and over again, probably the greatest moment in my entire life as a collector, like nothing will top walking into that room, seeing those shelves, and then finally walking up, and I start going like this. I start lifting up one bag at a time, and I'm like completely blown away. Every bag I lift, I saw this gorgeous, you know, vintage Don Post mask, and I knew they weren't they weren't reissues, you know, they weren't, they weren't calendar reissues. They, they weren't like nineties masks. They were old, old specialty copies, um, rare copies, things that I, some of them I didn't even know the origins at first of where the hell they could have even been casted from. And the more, the more I, dove deeper into just what was on these two shelves, the more incredible um, it became. 
So, um, a lot of the masks I've been showing you on this channel with the artifacts of the Frankenstein videos, but I had to come here to show you where these masks came from. And these are, these are, this isn't his mask collection. This was his bedroom where these masks were and they were locked away for decades, you know, and then he finally sealed them off and didn't go in there for 10 years. And so back, back to these masks, um, you can see by the images I'm showing you right now that, you know, I'm walking in there like, what the hell am I looking at? You know? And I know, I, I know his reputation. You know, I've, the, the one thing my friend Dante told me when I, I, I called Dante, I think I emailed him. I said, Dante, Frank finally gave me the go to come out to visit the Franken shrine. And he wrote back and Dante visited Frank in the eighties. <laughs> so this is now 2016, right? Dante wrote, once you visit the Franken shrine, you will never be the same. <laughs> and now I'm like, what the hell are under these bags? You know? And I'm like, just blown away by every thing I'm peeking under. It's, it's vintage creature masks, the fly, there's vintage Frankensteins. I don't even know what they are at this point, you know, but I'm like, is this a real calendar mask? I don't even know, you know, because I'm, I'm just getting little glimpses of these little, you know, parts of their faces. And, uh, and I can see how nice and clean they were because they were so well protected under the plastic. And uh, one by one, I peeked under every one of them and I just had to stop for a minute and stare at it. And I, I'm like, I need to document this. I need to document every step I take here because I want to remember this in detail for the rest of my life. And I want to share it with all my friends in the mask world. I want them to see exactly what I went through on this day and uh his brother was working at the time and he was going to come back to the house there to meet me and uh i was real nervous you know to meet his brother and uh it was still early in the day and i said i said um frank he, he oh he I, before i came out he asked me to bring clean bags because he told me, he goes, they're going to be dusty. They're under these plastic bags. Can you bring brand new bags and we can put new bags on them or something, you know? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm not thinking much of it at the time. Now I've got this stack of brand new clear bags, you know, I, I ordered. And, uh, and I mean, just touching one bag, I was just filthy. Just dust would slowly start falling everywhere. So... I looked at Frank and I said, I can't just pull these bags off. Boom, boom, boom. I don't want to get all this dust in like some Frankenstein's hair or Dracula's hair. These Dracula, this Lugosi casting was there. Oh my God. So I said, do you mind? You know, he couldn't like, it's not like we were going to be able to go do a bunch of things that day. He, he really, you know, his energy would wear out. You know, Frank couldn't really move around too well so i said do you mind if i slowly go one by one through these entire two shelves there's other things in the room i <laughs> covered in bags the same way big pieces like the elvira was in there the niecy bride was in there yeah i know i recognize these things i'm like all in this bedroom just untouched by time you know it seemed like they were just stuck away and forgotten you know and i said frank can i i want to take down each one one by one i'm going to carefully lift off the bag you know super slow and i would hand him the bag like he would wait outside the door i wore a mask it was it was that bad you know the dust i wore a mask and i would take the bag off so careful not to because it would just and he would wait, I think he had like a paper bag or something, and we would just put that in there. 
and I would, and I'm like, you know, it was literally Indiana Jones grabbing the idol. Like, that's how I felt touching these masks for the first time, you know? And, uh, you know, a few of them were, I was so mind scrambled. I was looking at like an 83 Karloff and like a, an 82 Phantom, like, what the hell are these? Because I was so crazy in my mind looking at the things I've seen. I couldn't even pick, I couldn't even place what they were at the moment, you know? So a couple of masks were common, a couple were common, but they were customized, you know, and I, but I'm looking at each one and I, I said, Frank, do you mind if I take each mask down? I'm going to photograph it, all angles of every mask. I want to document all of this and I will put a brand new bag on. I'm going to clean the shelf out underneath it and put each one back. He's like, oh, please, please, please. And uh, that took me probably seven and a half hours. It literally took all day. And uh, I cleaned every one of those bags off so carefully, removed every plastic bag. And it's like you didn't know what you were uncovering right away, you know? And I would take one bag off. It's the... 60s sculpt Metal Luna Mutant, you know, another bag, 1975 Don Post Mummy, blonde haired mummy, just gorgeous. Another one was one of the rare Lugosi castings, you know, that like, holy shit, you know, but it turned out to be the one that Rick Stratton painted, you know, in like 82, I, I've showed it on the channel, but I'm looking at these masks like blown away. So, um, <clears throat> from there it was 1977 Fly, a whole nother late 60s or early 70s Mummy, the recent one I show him, the Calendar Mad Doctor, the master copy Mad Doctor was under the, another bag, the Mr. Hyde I just showed you with the top hat we added the other day. That was under another bag. The incredible smooth Frankenstein mask I just talked about yesterday that was painted by Rick Stratton. And uh, I've got some video footage of it I'll show you here. It's pretty funny what I say. That looks like the hair work of someone I know. But uh, one by one by one, over seven or eight hours of uncovering them, and I'm just like, just in a, in a place where I never, you know, to me it was, I've told, I've told friends of mine, like Pete from Devil's Workshop, I said, you ever have a dream where, and I've had several dreams like this, which is so funny. <laughs> I've had dreams where I would be in some crazy toy store or garage sale and some strange place that doesn't exist and it's just all of this rare stuff this old stuff and it's all there right in front of you and it's like the greatest thing you've ever seen you know and you're walking through you know shelves full of stuff and you just can't believe all of this incredible stuff and and then like you're actually like I've had dreams where I'm like putting stuff in a shopping cart <laughs> all these rare toys and stuff and then I wake up and I am the most, most upset, pissed off individual in the universe because the dream wasn't real. I said, Pete, this is that dream, but it's real. That's the feeling I got hanging out with Frank and looking at his stuff and it was just crazy, you know? So this bedroom, this whole thing I'm showing you now, it's not even part of the collection. I mean, it's part of his collection, but it's not the collection, you know, it's not the, it's not the actual Frankenstein location, I should say. You know, then we get into another bag and it's a incredible, an incredible vintage creature from the Black Lagoon casting, right? You know, there was a, there was an underwater creature, then there was a freaking land creature that was beautiful. Just, I could tell 
they were probably custom pulls from the early 80s, you know, from California. I knew where a lot of these probably came from. And then later I found out a lot of information on them. And I've shared a lot with you. And there's more to share. There's more coming out on these masks. Um, but and there's some masks you haven't seen yet, but you're going to see them in these photos. Um, God, what else was in there? There's, there was the, the Hunchback, the Mr. Hyde, the, the Calendar Mad Doc, the Smooth Glen Strange. There was a mole people, a mole man that was one of the most gorgeous ones I've ever seen. It's sitting right behind me. I'm, I'm in the corner up there. You see it? It's up against the back wall. Just pristine vintage, probably a custom pull from the original mold, you know? It's very hard to tell, but man, it's like I look around and and I I was just 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 experiencing that was was phenomenal, you know, to me, to as a mass collector. Um, and I said, Frank, someday I'm going to show this to everybody, everyone in the hobby, the mass community, the world. You know, I want them to see what I experienced, you know. And to him, it's his old bedroom. It's his old masks, you know, and these were masks. His, his, his collection got so out of hand that, like, these are things that were just put aside and forgot about, you know. And as I'm walking through the room, I look up on top of this TV set right above me. And it is the... <laughs> It's the Halloween Society Bride of Frankenstein monster sculpted by Joel Dolanich right by my head, you know, and I'm like, then I look directly below the shelves and there's uh, the Halloween Society demon, you know, he had the, he had a bag that was kind of half on and off. So he was dusty, but oh my God. There were little Billiken models scattered throughout the room, just full of dust. And I'm like, I'm so mind blown. I'm, I haven't even looked to the left yet. I start looking left. I see the Elvira. I see the, the Nisi bride. Then I turn around <laughs> and they're on the dresser under plastic. I, could, I knew exactly what it was when I saw the massive mound sitting there was the Halloween Society Quasimodo, you know, and, uh, man, I mean, for a first impression of Frank and, you know, some rare pieces, it was everything. It was everything. So just, uh, you know, for this Halloween episode, I wanted you guys, I wanted to share a special Thing with you and uh, because I know a lot of you really like to hear me tell you stories well, some people come to this channel and they're so irritated by my talking <laughs> you know somebody commented the other day they said you know I expected to see a Rick Baker gorilla within two minutes and you talked for over four minutes and I just you know there's gotta be much less talking by you and I'm like this ain't TikTok, bitch this is Rudy's world I'm Rudy you have to listen to me and if you don't like it, go, go away. <laughs> like, don't come to my channel, you know? I know a lot of you are hardcore certified monster kids. And a lot of you are really into these videos with the articles of the Frankenstein. So I had to sit here and tell you this story, show you what I experienced my very first day of meeting Frank. <laughs> you know, little did I know what else I was going to get into, you know, in days to come with that visit, but the things I saw the first afternoon, you know, and then his brother came home, uh, for the first time as brother. And I'm thinking he's either going to be really great or he's going to say, you know, like this younger guy's there, Frank, you know, Frank's in his seventies. He can't, I, I, I thought he's gonna be like, what the hell are you doing here? Get the hell out of here. I'm covered in dust. I got a mask on. I'm cleaning. And, uh, but he knew when his brother came in the room. 
he knew we were, he goes, yeah. He goes, oh my God, you're Frank's friend. You're the guy who calls all the time. He goes, it's so good to meet you. He shook my hand, smiling. He goes, I'm so happy you came out to see Frank, you know, and uh, he goes, stay as long as you like. It was awesome, you know, and we, we, man, now, now his brother and I are like great, great, great friends, you know, and it's, it's crazy with Frank being gone. I never, his brother and I never really thought we would become these great friends together. And it's, that just, that just blossomed a whole nother friendship through this, you know, which is, it was amazing. So yeah, I just had to share, share something great with you for the Halloween episode of the Crimson Ghost Mask Room. I had to decorate a little bit for you, you know, I had to make it cool. And, and man, I got to film some of this. I want to film a little bit of this before we uh, turn the lights on because if you see what it looks like on these shelves with these crazy lights, it's gorgeous. And, um, and it's, I'm so happy I took the photos of these masks one by one as I was uncovering them because uh, you've, you're all familiar with a lot of these masks already from the videos I've done, you know? So it's cool that you get to see where the hell these were all sitting for like the past 30 plus years, you know? They're sitting on two little wooden bedroom shelves under plastic bags, you know, locked away in silence. Who knows where they're gonna end up someday, but I wanna make sure this story will live on and the images I just showed you will live on and people will say, man, that's that mask that that guy found 40 years ago. You know, that that's, 80 years old now <laughs> and uh it's a freaking antique but it's in great shape because uh you know if someone took the time to take good care of it you know and, and make sure make sure it will live on you know i promised frank i said i will do whatever i can to make your collection live on i said i don't know how <laughs> but i will do it i said i'm your guy you know and uh he knew that he knew that and, uh, you know, in the past with this channel, I came to realize I'm like these videos, the artifacts of the Frankie shrine is an awesome way to help his collection live on for sure. And introduce it to the world. You know, I said, I said, I'm going to show the world your collection someday. And he said, I would like that. <laughs> so I hope you are having a great Halloween today. Go out and trick or treat. It's a crazy world out there. So go have a little fun on this Halloween night. Be careful, be safe, get a lot of candy. And I want to thank you for watching this special episode with me and all things Frankenstein that we just looked at. And uh, let's hope we'll have another year full of great videos coming up and uh, We'll be sitting here next Halloween talking about more cool stuff. Thank you, and it means a lot that you watch the channel. Please hit the like button, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hey, post the videos once in a while out there. Tell people, you want to see some cool shit? Watch this, watch this weird guy in Indiana with all these masks. All right, guys. Again, have a safe Halloween. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.